Stan Jabalisco here. I'd like to explain to you exactly what is meant by the term charge carrier in electricity. What is an electrical charge carrier? You've probably heard that expression before. Well, as you may already know, electrical charge is a is kind of one of those uh, terms or notions that's very difficult to specifically define. But it is a property that certain things can have that cause them to behave in certain way, uh, ways with respect to other things that have uh, similar properties. Uh, and that doesn't really tell you a whole lot now, does it? But um, back in the olden days of electricity, they discovered that, for example, when you rub a piece of glass with a silk cloth, you would get certain behaviors uh, on that piece of glass, on that rod of glass, particularly in dry weather. They called that property electric charge. They didn't know what it was that uh, actually was responsible for that, uh, but they just observed that it happened, and they called it an electric charge. If you, if you scuff around on a carpet on a dry day in the winter up north, uh, with hard-soled shoes, and then you touch some heavy metal object that's grounded well, like a radiator or a refrigerator or even a cold water pipe, you'll get a sh you'll get a zap, a little spark, a little snap. You'll feel that, and that is electrical charge on your body with respect to that uh, other object. And uh, so that is what charge is. But what is it that actually is responsible for that? Well, usually, in most everyday situations, electrons are responsible for carrying the electric charge that causes the phenomena that we see. And electrons, you know, as from your chemistry courses you may know, are those things that, in the simplistic model of the atom, one of the most simplistic models of the atom is called the Bohr atom. After Niels Bohr, a physicist who lived quite a long time ago, but he was a well-known uh, physicist having to do with atomic structure and chemistry and electricity. And back then, all those fields were kind of rolled into one. We didn't have these unique specialties like we do now. Uh, for example, you know, uh, removing a virus from a computer in the Windows 8.1 operating system. I mean, he had much more generalized scientific endeavors. Uh, but uh, eventually, uh, they discovered that these electrons, these things that seem to orbit, and I put that in quotes because that's not exactly the way that they do it, but they exist in a sort of a cloud around a dense center called the nucleus and they just arbitrarily decided to assign specific electrostatic charges to the nucleus and to the electrons and they said the the electrons have what they call a negative electrical charge and the nucleus has what they call a positive electrical charge just by they just arbitrarily made those names up they had to name them something. I mean, they could have reversed those names and it would have worked just as well, but they they had to make a decision, so they probably flipped a coin. You know, back then a quarter might actually buy you a whole supper. Maybe they flipped a quarter dollar or bet each other a hamburger at Louie's south of Leeds, South Dakota. If that place existed then, maybe a hamburger meal only cost you a quarter. Um, but anyway, now I guess if you wash your dishes, it'll still only cost you a quarter. But seriously, um, the electrons uh, can flow or move or jump amongst atoms. In the nucleus, there are two types of particles known as protons and neutrons. The protons represented here by the dark dots represent carry a positive charge the neutrons don't carry any charge at all but they but both protons and neutrons are much much heavier 
than electrons, and they're also stuck together in this clump. They can't easily migrate from atom to atom. If they do, well, you've got a nuclear reaction then. That's where the term nuclear comes from. It has to do with an atomic nucleus. But electrons can easily jump from atom to atom, and if they do that enough times in the same direction, say there's a whole bunch of atoms like this, millions and millions of them, say this is copper, a copper wire. These are the copper atoms, mostly empty space. These electrons can jump from one copper atom to the one off the screen over there on the right, and then one comes in and replaces it from some other copper atom off the screen to the left, so you get an endless myriad sequence of electrons jumping from atom to atom to atom to atom, left to right, left to right, and you get what they call a so-called electron current or electron movement of charge carriers from the left to the right. The electrons have an electrostatic charge and they carry that charge from atom to atom as they move. That's where the term charge carrier comes from. Now electrons aren't the only charge carriers that can exist. In most electrical situations, electricity phenomena that we observe today, electrons are the charge carriers. But if you have a, a, a bunch of high-speed protons ejected from the sun, say, towards the earth, those protons have a positive charge and they are therefore charge carriers. And you actually get, in effect, an electrical current flowing from the sun to the earth. When that electrical current, when those charge carriers, which in this case are protons, encounter the earth's magnetic field, it upsets that magnetic field and all of those particles get accelerated around the poles and produce a, the phenomena that we call the northern lights and southern lights and also produce a variety of other interesting natural phenomena uh, which uh, go under the general term a geomagnetic storm. That sounds pretty scary, doesn't it? Well, the media would love to scare you to death over stuff like this, because then maybe they'll invent a geomagnetic storm protection tax so that they can suck some more money out of you under the guise of paying for something that can't be done. But anyway, that well, that's just a little snark. The, you, you ever seen snark tags in a, like in a blog post? Snark tags. And it means the snark begins, this means the snark ends. And that's pretty good time to write this because I'm going to end this snarky video now. But I am serious about the electrons being charge carriers. That's what uh, charge carriers usually are. Stan Jibalisco signing off until next time. So long. Don't let them tax you to death. <laughs>